Hey guys, Jace Nykler here, and we are at the Capitol Lounge with Faraz. Hey, how's it going? Good, thanks for talking to us today. Of course, thank you for talking to me. Oh, always. <laughs> so your EP obviously is playing in the background. Tell me all about it, because I'm obsessed with that. Thank you. Um, it's just like a collection of songs, I think, that I've been working on for the last, like, five years. <laughs> just a small amount of time. Um, and it's sort of, I feel like, a cross-section a bit of just who I am. You know, I, I really... I want to make a full-length record, and that's what I'm doing after my tour's over, but I think I just wanted to give people a, a taste of kind of what I do, and um, that's why we kind of went with the EP, and yeah. Is it hard to choose songs, because you obviously have to dwindle it down to like five of them? Yeah, it's really hard. I mean, it's kind of like every song that you write, you want on uh -huh. something, and you want people to hear, but um, yeah, I mean, I feel like the best songs kind of made, you know, the cut, and uh, at least I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> And lyrically, you have a lot of, like, biblical references. Like, I think one of the lines is hanging on the cross like Jesus. And then you talk about speaking in tongues. Where does that come from? Were you raised religious, or how did that work? I was raised Catholic. Um, and um, actually, my father's Muslim. My, my mom's Catholic. And then, I don't know, I've just always sort of, I went to Sunday school. I did that whole thing. And then I sort of became really involved in, like, church camp and more, like, Pentecostal <laughs> kind okay. of things. And then... I don't know, as I got older, I started studying Buddhism and more Eastern religions and philosophies. And um, I've just, I've always been really obsessed with um, spiritual things and kind of esoteric things and um, all that stuff. So it naturally finds its way into my music, I think, because it interests me yeah. a great deal. It gives it like another level when you're listening yeah. to it. Totally. So, working on the debut album, Full Length, is there anybody you're dying to collaborate with? Dying to collaborate dying. with? Dying. Um, <laughs> I guess. Um, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of a lot of artists, but um, I was really fortunate to have Katie, you know, on my EP, yeah. and, and she featured on that. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't really want to say any names okay. because I think sometimes if it doesn't happen, then it's just kind of like, oh, there's that person trying to get a shout out. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of a lot of artists. And Katie executive produced the album as well? Yeah, totally. Uh, she is very controlling and she's one of my dear <laughs> friends. And um, she's really, she's got a very keen kind of music sense and yeah. business sense. And she's really good with like helping to kind of bring a direction to sometimes my chaotic um, musical sense. So, uh, yeah, she was the boss, okay. big boss. <laughs> and sort of explain to us how that came about, because you're obviously the first artist on her label. Did she approach you? Did you approach her? Um, we were in Paris, actually, for Fashion Week, okay. and um, she asked me if I wanted to have a meeting with her, and that's always a bit alarming when somebody wants to have yeah. a meeting with you. <laughs> And uh, we went down to our hotel bar and um, we had a bite to eat and she was like, I want to sign you to a label that I'm creating. And um, I was kind of like totally blown away by that. And um, I said, really, like, how is this going to work? Like, is this yeah. going to be weird with our friendship? And she was like, no, like, I want to make sure that your music gets out there and I'm doing this for you. So it was really uh, an honor to have, you know, her... That's do awesome. this for me yeah do you feel more pressure being the first artist on the label i don't know if i feel pressure being the first artist or just an artist uh, yeah. on a label i mean it's high pressure any way you slice it so um inaugural or last yeah. i mean you you know there's expectations that you have to meet and um i'm just interested in creating good art or art yeah and you know hopefully it finds an audience and it resonates with people and you know people find it interesting or you know worthy of purchase <laughs> that's good yeah what's some of the best advice she's given you um i think katie has really more than given me advice i think she's just been sort of more inspirational in the sense of she's just got a very dynamic personality and she doesn't really care you know what other people think in the sense of 
you know, she just kind of does what she does and she just is who she is. And that's very inspiring to me because I feel like for a lot of my life, I kind of repressed certain aspects of my personality or whatever to fit in. And um, as I get older, I've realized that there's really enough of everybody else in the world. And, you know, I just want to be myself and express myself and um, having you know, those kind of people in my life who support me in my vision. Um, it's really quite uh, amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. So you're on the Prismatic World Tour with Katie. What's the experience been like so far? Um, it's crazy. There's little girls everywhere. <laughs> um, some drunk moms, which is really um, awesome. interesting too, who try to kiss me. Um, and <laughs> what's that? Do you love them? Sometimes. <laughs> uh, depends on how deep their pockets are <laughs> no <laughs> or how drunk i am um no it's it's really amazing i mean getting to go out on her stage you know with in a stadium or whatever of 15,000 20,000 yeah. people i mean that's probably the most epic thing that an artist could experience so um it's it's incredible that's awesome yeah so obviously you're just starting out reintroducing yourself with the new label, but where would you say you see yourself in five years? <laughs> I hate this pressure. Okay, by the way, yeah, yeah, that's a really cool tattoo. Oh, thank you. Um, no, uh, in five years, I hope to still be doing music. You know, I hope to continue to evolve and, um, you know, to change and to be inspired by the world at that time. And you know, I'm really into fashion. Um, I'd really like to have a clothing line at some point. Um, I can remember being like eight years old and like taking blankets and making my mom stand there and using her as a model. And I'd like wrap around and like make dresses on her and that sort of thing. So <laughs> hopefully I could do that for real sometime. And uh, I'm really into um, fragrances. Okay. Um, I kind of get lost at Barney's and I go in and I ask what all of the different notes are in oh, wow. certain fragrances. So that's something that I found really interesting. Um, so yeah, hopefully. Sounds like you're set up for a career in the pop world. <laughs> I hope oh, yeah. so. I hope so. But hopefully not so cheesy. Like, yeah. <laughs> I want to be a fashion designer. I want to have a friend, you know. I feel like Katie's a good inspiration for that, though. She is. She's an empire. There you go. Yeah. Okay, we're going to play Would You Rather with Faras. Are you ready for this? Oh my god, I don't know. They're like, not that bad. Is it sexual? No. Do you want it to be? <laughs> I don't care. We can, we can Google some. I'm an open book. Okay, good. Okay, would you rather be invisible or able to read minds? Uh, maybe read minds because then I could like make anybody do anything I wanted oh. them to do. If you're invisible, you'd never get noticed. That's true. Yeah. But then you can always know what people are thinking about you. If you read minds. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I want to know. I don't know if I want to know. Yeah, it's Actually, scary. it is really scary. I would just want to know if, like, somebody that I thought was hot, like, wanted oh, me back. Okay. That's that, useful. That would be very useful. When you're on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any of those oh. sites, unfortunately. Damn it. Okay. Or those apps. Whatever they're called. Sites. Yeah. Same thing. Okay, would you rather have a time machine into the future or the past? The future. Future? Yeah, I feel like the past is the past, and... Um, I don't know, like, I, people can go in a time machine into the past all the time, you know what I mean? And that can really, like, screw with your brain. So I'd rather just look forward and hopefully see really good things. Good. Yeah. Okay, would you rather change gender every time you sneeze or not be able to tell the difference between a muffin and a baby? <laughs> <laughs> These are from the internet. <laughs> change gender. <laughs> okay, every time you sneeze? Sure. It'd be kind of fun. Okay, would you rather be sexually attracted to fruit or have Cheeto dust permanently stuck on your fingers? Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I think that I would rather be sexually attracted to okay. fruit. You can still like cover that up, I feel like. Yeah, well, I mean, fruit can actually be kind of sexual anyway, depending yeah. on what you, do with it. what you do with it and who you are. Oh, well, there you go. We're learning a lot. <laughs> okay, now we have some fan questions. Are you ready for this? Yes. No more fruit questions. Thank God. Okay. This is from John Kills, and he wants to know, are we getting a studio version of Dirty Leather Jacket? I've recorded it. Okay. And um, I I don't know. The, the answer is I don't know. I okay. did record it, and uh, 
it depends on how it fits into the story of the record okay. that I end up making. So it seems to be like a fan favorite. Yeah. So we it, got like five questions about that song. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, so I should listen then. Maybe like a bonus track. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. It's one of my favorites. Okay. Um, this is from Velvet Silk. And she says, are you working with Adam Lambert on his third album? I don't know. Adam, am I working with you on your third album? Um, I don't know. Adam uh, always sort of calls me at, at some point during his recording and it's okay. like, hey, let's do something. So I'm always up for collaborating with him. I love him. Would you have him on your album? Would I have him on mine? Yeah. Sure. If he wants yeah. to be on. Invite him. Adam, listen up. We got we got another duet coming. Okay. Um, this is from Katie Cat Forever and she wants to know, what's your favorite food? Uh, I love anything Asian, so okay. probably Chinese food. Really, like, dirty Chinese food, okay. like egg rolls and, like, dim sum and okay. that kind of stuff, yeah. We're talking a lot about food. <laughs> um, this is from Renzo Santolini, and she wants to know, why do you have an alien addiction? Ugh, because I find them so sexually attractive. No, um, <laughs> you know what? I've I've always been obsessed with, like, the galaxy and like you know outer space ever since i've been a kid and um i just find something so interesting about these beings that you know i fully think exist i fully think that the government is like covering it up i think that they're amongst us and i don't know it's just it's very intriguing to me you know i i like the way they look they're kind of scary and um intriguing and i just think they're interesting things and your fans refer to themselves as the aliens now, right? Yeah, you like that? totally. I love it. I always get like little drawings of myself with my <laughs> eyes skewed or whatever. I think it's really cute. That's awesome. Okay, one final one. What is your favorite song to perform live from Gwen Jemin 321? From who? Gwen Jemin. Do you know her? Gwen Jemin. Hot. No, I don't know. Um, um, my favorite song to perform, I think, is king of sabotage okay. because it's for me like the realist that i am on the record in terms of just exposing myself and sort of um uh allowing myself to just be completely exposed um the song is about um well actually we're listening to the song oh, um perfect. <laughs> yeah the song is just about my tendency to be very chaotic and when things are going really well for me like messing them up and I've done it all my life and um, I'm actually in therapy now so it's getting better (laughs) for the last year Um, but I don't know I play piano in it a lot and it's it's the moment where everything kind of breaks down and I just get to have a bit more of a connection to that so it's really fun yeah any idea when the album's gonna come out I have no idea but I go to work on it as soon as I'm finished with my part of tour in October so um, hopefully sometime next year Awesome. I don't want to make people wait too long. Yeah. It's kind of like that American Idol thing where like people win it, or not just American yeah. Idol, but like the reality show, people win, and then like a year and a half later, the album comes out, and people are like, ah. Who are they? Yeah. yeah. So. Awesome. Well, everybody buy it when it comes out, and get the EP on iTunes right now. Thank you for talking to us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Very interesting. Hey, I'm Faraz. Buzz you later.